hi everyone welcome back to the channel i hope you guys are doing well there are around 40 days left for our epfo examination which falls on 2nd of july so today we are back with another video and in this video we'll discuss the science previous year questions from enforcement officer 2020 examination so let us start with the video so when we analyze the question paper of 2020 EPFO enforcement officer accounts officer examination we find that there were total 15 questions which were asked from science portion and if we roughly do the breakup so there were around five questions from biology six questions from chemistry and four questions from physics so last time also in earlier video which you can find on my channel we saw that there were 11 questions which came from science and this time there are 15 questions which were asked from science subject so we again we can expect that there will be 10 to 15 questions this time also from science and most of these questions are uh, solvable or can be solved using our regular ncrt textbooks so as i advised you last in last video as well do go through 9th and 10th ncrt and the class 12th biology ncrt because most of the questions can be solved using these three ncrts so now let us start with the video so first question which you can see on your screen is which one of the following is not a female reproductive organ so they are asking which is not a female reproductive organ so similar of kind of question we can expect this time in uh, epfo from circulatory system digestive system nervous system like this so the correct answer here is stamen so we know that stamen is actually male reproductive organ of a flowering plant so it is a male reproductive organ stamen so here you can find the screenshot from the ncrt textbook androsium is composed of stamens is stamen which represents the male reproductive organ consists of a stalk or a filament and an anther so here we can see that stamen is a male reproductive organ it does not belong to female reproductive organ so on similar lines prepare circulatory system digestive system nervous system and all those basic stuff from biology moving on to the next question which one of the following cannot be called amphibian of plant kingdom so they are asking which one is not called as the amphibian of plant kingdom so we know that bryophytes basically are called as the amphibian of plant kingdom so why these bryophytes are called as amphibians of plant kingdom because plant these plants basically bryophytes need both water and soil for their survival bryophytes need both water and soil for their survival water and soil so these bryophytes are known as the amphibians of plant kingdom so here the answer is spirogyra you can see the screenshot from NCRT textbook which says that it is a green colored algae so basically spirogyra are free floating green algae they are present in fresh water habitats such as ponds or lakes etc and they belong to the division thalophyta t-h-a double l o p-h-y-t-a thalophyta and the remaining three are bryophytes basically which are known as the amphibian of plant kingdom so again a basic question from ncrt biology so what we expect to learn here is we have to prepare plant kingdom as well as animal kingdom because similar questions can be asked in this time's examination next question is which one of the following is not a consequence of deforestation so they are asking which is not a consequence of deforestation so basically we know that what is deforestation basically removal of trees and when we remove the trees from a given area the biodiversity will decrease then there will be increased soil erosion water runoff will increase there will be decreased rainfall in that region but groundwater table will not increase due to deforestation so correct answer here is a so as a result of deforestation if we see the main causes of deforestation it is basically the agriculture is one of the cause why deforestation is happening then shifting cultivation again a part of agriculture shifting cultivation so the third one is urbanization 
this is again one of the major cause of deforestation and then overgrazing of forests overgrazing of forest by animals so again this is leading us to deforestation so these are primarily the main causes of deforestation so very basic question which can be answered easily next question is which one of the following chromosomes has a mismatched pair in a normal human male so we have to identify the mismatch pair in normal human male so we can see clearly x chromosome is the correct answer here if you see the screenshot here from ncrt textbook what is written here the sex of children will be determined by what they inherit from their father a child who inherits an x chromosome from her father will be a girl and one who inherits y chromosome from him will be a boy so x chromosome is associated with girl it is not associated with a human male so x chromosome is the correct answer here so we know that females produce these gametes which is called as ova and they are responsible for producing the x chromosome so x chromosome is basically characteristics of female gender that is what you have to remember here moving on to the next question the word vaccine has been derived from a latin word having meaning so the correct answer here is cow cow is the correct answer here so the word vaccine was created by edward jenner not given in ncrt but it can be found in some other textbooks edward jenner is the correct uh, name of person who has derived uh, given this word vaccine so it derives actually from the word vacca and this vacca in latin means cow and this cowpox matter was actually used to create world's first vaccine so the word vaccine has been derived from the word cow moving on to the next question which is from physics which one of the following statements is true with regard to image formation by two eyes of a person so correct answer is d here we already know this or we have read in our school actually each eye sees a slightly different image now again this is covered in our regular ncrt textbook if you see this box which is given in ncrt do you know so in that they have written that our eyes are separated by few centimeters each eye sees a slightly different image our brain combines two images into one and thus gives us extra information to tell us how close or far away things are so we know that d is the correct answer here each eye sees a slightly different image next question is which one of the following is correct wavelength of microwaves ranges between so every one of you might be using microwave oven at your homes so that uses microwave for heating the food so we have to find out that the wavelength ranges between whom so the correct answer is infrared waves and radio waves so if you see this electromagnetic spectrum which is again given in ncrt textbook you can find that these microwaves fall here in between infrared and radio waves so a is the correct answer here now again remember uh, while preparing this electromagnetic spectrum you have to focus on the application part they can ask the applications of various kind of waves like this microwaves are used in spacecraft communication telephone lines television for heating food in microwave oven so similarly you have to prepare the applications of infrared waves radio waves and the other waves which are given here and also try to remember the wavelength and frequency uh, of these waves because we might again get similar question moving on to the next question which one of the following is size of hydrogen atom so very easy question hydrogen atom size is they are asking so 10 raised to minus 10 meter given in ncrt textbook thomson model of atom so jj J. thomson in 1898 proposed that an atom possesses a spherical shape whose radius is approximately 10 raised to minus 10 meter so atom has a spherical shape is what was told by thomson and it has a radius of 10 raised to minus 10 meter so a is the correct answer here next question is which one of the following statements regarding force is correct so a very good question so here d is the correct answer here now observe the statements a and b a positive force implies attractive nature where when this is incorrect actually this should have been repulsive 
and in second statement a negative force implies a repulsive nature when well, this is again replaced by the word attractive so what they have done they have just replaced the attractive and repulsive word here so as a result both statements become incorrect now if you see that uh, means when charges have opposite sign so here you can see in this diagram we have a nucleus here and one electron is there so this electron has a negative charge whereas this nucleus has a positive charge and we can see that these charges have opposite signs so force between them is an attractive force and this attractive force is denoted by negative f whereas if both charges have same sign like electron and electron so since they have same sign so they will repel each other so the force will be repulsive in nature and that repulsive force will be called as positive force so this is again covered in our ncrt textbook so the correct answer here is a negative force implies attractive nature so we know that this negative force this implies an attractive force attractive nature moving on to the next question again from physics when a dielectric material is kept in an external electric field which one of the following phenomena may be realized so they are asking about dielectric material so what is a dielectric material so dielectric or material are non conducting substances basically they are insulators you can say non conducting materials they will not conduct any heat or electricity so they don't have any charge carrier between them so the correct answer here is so again you can see here that it is given in class 12th ncrt actually physics ncrt that if medium between plates of a capacitor is filled with an insulating substance which is dielectric material the electric field due to the charged particle induces a net dipole moment in the dielectric and this effect is called as polarization so that is what they have asked here that this phenomena which is realized here is called as polarization so the correct answer here is option b moving on to the next question question number 51 which one of the following substances when added to water will not change the ph so sodium chloride we know that it is a salt basically so this sodium chloride salt when it is added to water it will break down into ions of sodium and chloride it will break down into ions of sodium and chloride and neither of them reacts with water so this since both sodium and chloride ions are not reacting with water so they will not change the ph of water whereas the other three options given are when they, it will react with water and will change the ph so d is the correct answer here next question is which one of the following on adding to water will not scatter a beam of light so this is tyndall effect basically t y a d a double l tyndall effect so we know that what is this tyndall effect event of scattering of light scattering of scattering of light by suspension scattering of light by suspension medium so this is what is called as tyndall effect so here you can see the screenshot from ncrt textbook again so solution of copper sulfate does not show tyndall effect means it will not allow a beam of light to pass through it here the correct answer is copper sulfate and this copper sulfate does not show any tyndall effect whereas this mixture of water and milk they show tyndall effect next question is which one of the following will not be reduced by metallic zinc so this question is from electrochemical series chemistry and the correct answer here is aluminum b so why aluminum because this copper hydrogen and silver all these cations are less reactive now less reactive with compared to whom they are less reactive than the metallic zinc which is asked in question so these since they are less reactive so they will be easily reduced by this metallic zinc whereas aluminum is more reactive than metallic zinc hence it will not be reduced by metallic zinc so the question is from electrochemical series next question is again a very easy one who among the following discovered proton so one question they asked from atom and what was the radius or size of atom now they are asking who discovered proton 
So Goldstein again covered in NCRT E Goldstein in 1886 discovered presence of new radiations in a gas discharge and called them canal rays. And these rays were positively charged radiations, which ultimately led to discovery of another subatomic particle. And that subatomic particle was given the name of proton. So its mass was approximately 2000 times as that of electron. So E Goldstein is the correct answer here. So he discovered the photon. Now the last question in this science PYQ series. They have given a balanced equation. Carbon monoxide 1 PO is reacting with 2H2 and it is giving us methanol CH3OH. And they are asking how many moles of methanol can be obtained by reacting 2 moles of CO with 2 moles of H2. Now if you see here for 1 mole of CO 2 mole of H2 is required. For 1 mole of CO 2 mole of H2 is required and then we are getting 1 mole of methanol. So if 2 mole of CO is to be reacted if 2 mole of CO is to be reacted then we require 4 mole of H2 actually 4 mole of H2 4, 4 mole of H2 will be required but only 2 mole of H2 is provided here in the question so hydrogen here will be the limiting reagent hydrogen here will act as a limiting reagent now what is meant by this limiting reagent with respect to chemical reaction it is the one who gets consumed first in any chemical reaction and therefore it limits how much the product will be formed. So hydrogen here will be the remitting reagent and therefore only one mole of methanol will be formed in this case or in this chemical reaction. If they had given you the two mole of CO with four mole of H2 then two moles of methanol would have been formed. But since they have only told us that uh, 2 mole of hydrogen is provided so hydrogen becomes a limiting reagent and as a result of that only 1 mole of methanol will be produced so again a good question from chemistry part so if you see through these questions questions from science so they are basically testing the basic knowledge of important chapters from physics biology and chemistry so as far as physics is considered you can prepare the chapter from heat then uh, pressure then gravitation optics so these are some important topics Newton's laws we have got a question on Newton's laws then motion so these are important topics from physics from chemistry acid bases salts periodic table that is what is to be prepared then again the at uh, various models proposed by scientists then atom electron proton neutron no discord one then from biology plant kingdom animal kingdom nutrition part health and basic stuff from pollution so this is what they are asking in these epfo examinations so if you have any doubt you can comment in comment section i will try to address your doubt this is all for today's session we'll continue our pyq series for other subjects as well Thank you.